Hey Eric in Kellogg, Idaho. Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut transitions extra active for your Ray-Ban 2132 new Wayfarer color 6052 which is the black crystal in the 55i size. So let's begin. I'm going to take everything out of the original packaging. Your Italian leather Ray-Ban case. Of course, Hang on here. Ray-Ban cleaning cloth and junk mail that comes in the case because you just don't get enough at home. And now the main attraction, the star of the show. Of course, this comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together while it's being shipped from Italy. And of course, I'm going to put it on there when I ship to you. But I'm going to take all this off. Your frame comes with the original G15, the heavy glass lenses that I'm going to pop out. You can hear that glass on the counter. And I'm going to cut a much lighter weight lens to go in there. So I'm going to take your frame, which is the black crystal. Again, this is the Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfair in the color 6052 in the 55 eye size. And of course, all New Wayfairs are made in Italy. So let me take your frame. I'm going to put it into the tracing element of my edger. Hit that little green circle. And everybody wants to know how does the machine know what shape lens to cut. This is why that little stylus is going to pop up and it's going to trace the shape of the right lens before moving over and doing the same for the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you will receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you'll be reimbursed for this purchase, whether these are prescription or not. Eric, you definitely need prescription, so I'm putting those in there. That green outline, let me minify that for a second. That is going to be the shape of your lens. I'm going to magnify again as I work on it. Your pupillary distance is 63 in both eyes. That is 31.5, so I'm going to bring that down, 31.5. And let's go ahead and get your lenses prepped. Leave the stylus over there. So, your right eye reads minus two and a quarter, minus a quarter at 10, minus two and a quarter, minus a quarter at 10. I'm gonna put the axis wheel of my Marco 101 lensometer to 10. And let me get my stylus out. This is going to be your right lens. And of course, you're gonna receive all the manufacturer's original packaging. That is the right so that you know you are receiving Essilor brand Transitions Extra Active. So I'm gonna take the lens out of the protective packet, put it into my, actually just put the power drum on minus two and a quarter. That is on axis 10, axis 10. Put the lens in, rotate it until the sphere power comes in clearly. And check your stigmatism correction of which you only have one step. And I'm going to put three dots on your lenses, which are too light for you to see, so I'm going to darken them. One, two, and three. And that is the right. Let's do the same thing for the left. Minus two and a quarter, minus a quarter at 155. Spin the axis wheel to 155. Take your left lens out of the packet. Minus two and a quarter, minus a quarter. And this is the left lens. Now it comes with two prescriptions on here, minus 250 plus a quarter, minus two and a quarter, minus a quarter. The plus cylinder is an old school way of writing prescriptions. Everything nowadays is done in minus cylinder, but they still write the packets that way. So let me take your left lens out of the protective sleeve. I'm on 155, yep, minus two and a quarter. Put the lens in, rotate it until the sphere power comes in clearly. Find the optical center of your lens. Check your stigmatism correction, of which you only have one step. And now let's put three dots on your lenses. Uno, dos, ocho. I didn't know there was going to be so much math involved. Okay, let's take everything back down here. So, your right lens, we're going to place it on the platform now. This is a block. I like to call it Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. This is what's going to hold it inside the machine. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got maybe two left. Whew, the last two. Okay, maybe I have one more left. I think i got one more left on that roll. Maybe, just maybe. So, the black side is the sticky side. That's how it sticks to my fingers. 
and put that on the first one put this on the second one now this little silver button on the back is a magnet it's going to do its job twice the first time well let me pull the paper off again make the black side sticky I'm going to marry this magnet to the one that's in here that's going to hold that in place and the reason why I put the three dots on there it tells me exactly how to orient your lens it can only go in your frame one particular way so those three dots give me a horizontal meridian that I'm going to place on that horizontal meridian. The geometric center of your frame is that blue cross. If you were to measure vertically and horizontally, that blue cross is dead center of your frame. Your eye is just inset from there, so that dot right there is your optical center. I'm going to place it inside that orange cross. And then these other two dots I'm going to line up. That tells me it's oriented in there just perfectly and it's not off. I'm going to hit that button and now the block is applied to your right lens. Let's do the same thing now for the left lens. Place the this mirrors over and mimics what I had on the right side, so 31.5, which is half of 63. Put that black dot in the center, that is your optical center of the lens, the thinnest part of your lens, which will sit directly in front of your pupil. Those other two black dots are lined up just perfectly. Grab the second block pull the paper off to make the black side sticky put the magnet in its place hit the button and now the block is applied to your left lens now this is the edger this is what costs forty thousand dollars it weighs 200 pounds i recommend everyone go out and buy one put it on your kitchen counter then you can cut your own glasses at home you won't need me anymore the actual cutting wheel is inside it's on the far right side with that white residue on there that's left over from lens material but that's what's going to grind your lens down to the final size. This wheel in the center, that channel, that little valley, that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So let's go ahead and take your right lens, and this is the second job for the magnet. I'm going to put it in place and hold it into the chuck. Of course, I like to call it the Charles because I don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck. But I'm going to wake up the computer. That is going to be the shape of your lens. These are not polycarbonate lenses. Transitions Extra Active only come in plastic, so I'm going to signify that with the PL, so that's plastic. I do not want to put a bevel on the front of the lens, and I do not want to, I'm mean, sorry, I'm not going to put a polish the lenses at all, and I'm not going to put a bevel on the front of the lens. I'm only going to put a bevel on the back surface of the lens, and I'm going to hit the green arrow, which is start in every language. A clamp shuts. And then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure the lens is large enough. To actually, hang on, back up, back up. I want to try something different. Because these are plastic, I'm actually going to move the bevel. I'm going to move the bevel forward, which is going to force your lens to sit a little bit back. Normally, it does it about 50%, which would have a little bit of your lens out the front. I normally work in the unbreakable polycarb, but I'm just going to hit the manual button to tell so I know where to place the bevel. Now the lens is going to be traced by those two white styluses, making sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame as it's going around, and of course measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to decide where the best place is to position the bevel, although I'm going to manually override that. I'm going to hit the percentage button. It comes up as 50%, but I'm going to move the bevel back. If you see, that's the bevel right there. I'm going to hit the minus button a couple times until we're about 35 so the bevel gets moved forward which is going to push most of the lens out of the rear of the frame for the best cosmetic value I'm going to hit the green button the machine's going to start up is it still on plastic? yes it's still on plastic and the lens is going to drop down onto the cutting wheel now if you notice water has begun spraying it does that for plastic lenses and high index plastic where polycarbonate cuts dry I'm sorry yeah so plastic cuts wet just to collect any optical sawdust so again your lenses the ESS which is Essilor 1.5 which is plastic transitions extra active GY stands for gray of course transitions extra active and of course all transition lenses come with UVA and UVB protection we know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive 
than your skin so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes that never needs to be reapplied unlike the lotions creams and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in intense direct exposure to the sun now trace the lens again just to double check its measurements the old carpenter saying measure twice cut once your lens is completely flat all around the edges now like, like a nickel i could take it out and it would stand up on the counter now it's getting the the bevel applied to the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame <coughs> now the transitions extra active it is designed for extra active people who want it that much darker now it still has a little bit of residual color inside let me get a piece of white paper where can I find some white paper here is haha the paper towel I'm gonna place my lens next to it. You can see how it has a little bit of a gray tint, even indoors compared to my regular transition lenses in my frame. So it has like about what I would call a 10% gray number one solid tint, even indoors, but it's gonna get very dark outdoors. So what we missed is a little arm came out with a spinning wheel on the end, something you would find at the end of a Dremel tool that is applying the safety bevel to the rear surface of the lens so in just a moment let's go ahead and take your lens out and dry it off and we will see if it fits into your frame first time around which i'm a little bit skeptical of in this frame the 52 millimeter which i wore in most of my videos in the last year and a half has a narrower bevel or less deep bevel than the 55 i usually have to cut these down a little bit more and I do this is not going into the frame so I'm going to take it down about a quarter of a millimeter I'm going to put the lens back in there and I'm going to hit the minus button just a few times and we're going to take it down a quarter of a millimeter and hit retouch now a millimeter to all my American friends who have no clue a millimeter is the distance between my thumbnails I'm going to take one quarter of that distance off going around the circumference of your lens until it fits easily into the frame don't worry that's not blood it's ink from my lensometer if that were blood I would be screaming now so that's how you can tell the difference <clears throat> so if there are any very active extra active people and regular transitions don't get dark enough this lens may be for you just be aware that it still keeps a little bit of residual tint even while indoors but it's going to get very dark outdoors even by transition standards so again that little arm is moved into place the spinning wheel that's applying the safety bevel to the rear surface of the lens and as soon as it's done i will take the lens out and we'll see if it fits if not i'll take it down a little bit more the golden rule you can always cut more off you can never add it back on so i apologize this takes a little longer but i am a perfectionist and i'm not going to put out any work that's subpar now i'm going to open this door with my mind you like that i can do other things with my mind I can melt ice with my mind it, it takes me a couple hours but I can do it okay so if you notice the bevel it has moved the lens a little bit further back so I'm going to tuck the lens in at the outside corner push down at the nose it snaps in perfectly let me make sure that's in there good yes it is so let's go ahead and pop the left lens in into the Chuck the Charles the Charlie the Chucky baby flip that over to L which stands for not right which is yeah just like me I ain't right either hit the green start button just like before the clamps gonna close the lens is gonna move up and it's gonna be traced by two white styluses making sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame you can see as it's going around following my finger as it goes and measuring the thickness at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel for the best cosmetic fit and of course you have no edge thickness whatsoever even with your prescription and a plastic lens so hit start that's because I moved the bevel normally you'd have a little bit coming out the front but I'm not going to have that happen I moved it because I have enough experience with this frame I'm the number one Ray-Ban seller in North Carolina having worn this frame myself for the last five years I know a little something about it so I'm going to pop this block off. It is no longer needed. Pull that sticker off. Let's come back down here to the lensometer. Grab my flashlight. You know, I've got a smaller flashlight. I just can't find it. So, spin the axis wheel back to 10. Put your lens in. And I'm going to read the power. And I'm getting 
minus two and a quarter. We're at two, two and a quarter, 250, 275, three. So we're one tick mark away from the two. Your prescription, of course, the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. Starting at zero and going up in quarter increments, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, one, and so on. So you need, you're at two and a quarter, so you need nine steps of correction for your farsightedness. You are nearsighted. Without your glasses on, everything from here in is wonderfully clear, beyond arm's reach. You need nine steps of correction. Without your glasses on, everything is actually much larger in real life than it appears. So when you put your glasses on, that's why it's a minus sign, minus, minus, minus sign. It will minify, that's what I was gonna try, it minifies to the correct size. Now, once the object is the correct size, you need one step of astigmatism correction. Now, there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone has curly hair. Everyone freaks out over that word, but that's just it. It's a shape. So, this number gets everything the correct size. Astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. So, it's the fine tune knob, and we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 10. A straight line is from 0 to 180. 0, 90, 180, 270 for those keeping score at home. So we're just going to turn that knob starting at 0 to about 10. Now same powers for your left eye. Nine steps of correction, one step of astigmatism correction. We're going to turn that knob to 155, past 90 to about right there. Now we're starting off at two and a quarter. I'm going to check the one step of astigmatism correction and we're at 250. Remember high school algebra where you add two like signs together? Well, don't worry. I, I've forgotten it too, Eric. But let's use today's terms. If someone had borrowed $2.25 from you, and then they borrowed another $0.25, cents, they would owe you $2.50. We are at $2.50 in the red. So, that is good. Let's go ahead and take your left lens out. Dry it off so it is not slippery. Let's see if I can find your frame. There it is. I'm going to tuck the left lens in. At the outside corner, using my thumbs, I press down the nose. It snaps in. Let's go ahead and take this block off. Pull the sticker off since that is no longer needed. Dry everything there. So, I need to spin that fine tune knob to 155. Put your left lens in over that red dot, which is, again is your optical center. And I'm getting, reading, minus two and a quarter. I'm going to check your astigmatism correction of one step. And what do you know? We're at 250 again. So that is made perfectly. I couldn't made that better if I, if I made it myself. Now remember, we're going to turn that knob to 155. This blue tip, let's take that off. Starting at 0, 90, and to 155, we turn that knob. If you missed any of that, let me recap. Oh, that's a bad joke, but you'll be telling it tomorrow. So, where are we at? Okay, your pupillary distance. 63 millimeters. So I'm going to turn this card around. I'm going to place the zero against my thumb on your right lens. And when we look at it on your left lens, we're getting 63 millimeters. So that is made perfectly. Man, this kid is good. It's my first day on the job. It's a good thing I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. So here's the point in every video that as I clean your lenses, and I mentioned to you when I ship these to you, and of course, free shipping anywhere in the United States. But when you get these in the mail, there is a small chance that these could fit either too loose or too tight. However, there is an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other, and I'm no exception. I'll show you in just a moment. But because of that st statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set it on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, when I take off mine and I set them on the counter, they wobble on the counter, but that's because my right ear is lower than my left ear. So flip these over, press down. There is no wobble. I close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do, and they're not askew in any way like that. Check the hinge on the tension on each hinge, and that is perfect. So this is what your lenses look like clear. <clears throat> versus mine so again just a little bit of tint while indoors now let's go ahead and activate them i'm going to show you what they look like when they've been darkened i've got my little transitions box in the corner which just has a strong uv light on the inside 
but I'm going to turn that on and expose them to a strong burst of UV light. And as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken, about 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 to return back to virtually clear when you go back indoors. Now, Eric, this is important. Pay attention. All transition lenses will get dark on day one. Give them two weeks of exposure to the sun and they're going to continue to darken for the first two weeks until they get to their final setting. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they won't work at maximum performance is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun, and that's why they don't get dark in a car. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken or as soon as you step out of the car. Plus, the other feature, since this is the middle of the summer coming up, they're also temperature sensitive. They will get darker when it's 85 degrees and below than they will when it's triple digits. I remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody likes to work 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. So that's it. Don't worry, Eric. They're going to continue to darken. Come on, we talked about this. Don't you remember? But that's it. If anyone has any questions about what I can or can't do, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Eric in Kellogg, Idaho, which sounds awesome. i got to come out there and visit. Hope you enjoyed watching as I cut your prescription transitions extra active for your Ray-Ban 2132 new Wayfarer, color 6052, which is the black crystal in the 55 eye size, the matte black finish, which does not show fingerprints, which is nice, and of course the crystal runs along the inside, that little two-tone, which matches today's most men's accessories, the, the black and the, and the platinum. So that's that. If anyone... That's what am I saying? I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry about that. But hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.